Don't worry, boss. I can't believe President Kimball is dead. The last thing we needed around here was another morale hit. Sorry, I'm not in the habit of letting random civilians dictate my troop deployment schedule. Watch yourself out there. Time for more fighting. I need you.
So, I heard you helped take over Nelson from the Legion. Glad to see someone making a difference around here instead of just complaining. Me? Well, I've been doing this shit for far too long and I've been in too many battles to remember. Still, this has got to be one of the worst situations I've been in. Not too much I can do about it, but do my job and do it right. Not good. If we don't get more supplies, we're gonna have to start using dirt for food and sticks and rocks for weapons. Hey, how'd you like to do something for me? I want you to collect NCR dog tags from our fallen troopers. That way I can keep track of who's gone and how to reallocate our supplies. It's easy. Just bring back any NCR dog tags you find and I'll try to make it worth your while. What can I do for you? Carry on. Hello. Took some skills to bring down that fiend. You done good. Used to be a ranger. One of the first they sent out east back before we took the dam. Observation and reconnaissance. We took the lay of the land, checked out the locals, and kept ourselves inconspicuous. A couple friends of mine were the first to scout the dam. That was back in 73, if I recall. A lot of those rangers are dead now. Vegas always chewed men up. It's just a little more literal nowadays. Well, that wasn't really a matter of choice. Got myself caught by legionaries up near Malpe. They had themselves some fun with me. Mangled my hands and feet pretty good. Wasn't much good with the pistol after that. Wasn't gonna be trekking across the waste on any more long scouts either. Caesar's boys figured I wasn't going anywhere after what they'd done to me. So they didn't bother tying me up. I crawled out of there on my elbows and knees. Must have looked a sight. Then I rolled down an embankment into the Colorado. I guess I had a mind to drown rather than give Caesar's boys the satisfaction of killing me. But a couple of rangers happened to be watching from across the river. They jumped on in and pulled me out of there. Lucky break, they said. Always a pleasure. Keep yourself safe. Got a second to talk, boss? Meeting Corporal Sterling? Well, you've kind of got me thinking. Here's a guy that's been beat all to hell, right? I mean, he could have retired from the service. But instead, he signs back on and does what he can. You think he did the right thing? That's what I love about you, boss. The pity you show for the less fortunate than you. He reminds me of me in some ways. I grew up in a place called Hidalgo Ranch. Just outside Mexico City. It wasn't much, just a bit of a farm. With a house for three generations of Tejada. I wasn't the best behaved kid. I was quick with my hands. With a pistol or a wrench. And I wasn't afraid to get into fights over it. I never killed anybody. But I had my share of run-ins with the police. Mostly my family kept me in line. This was before the war. We were far enough away from Mexico City when the bombs fell. That we missed the worst of it. Things got bad quick. Just a few days after Mexico City was vaporized, refugees started pouring down the road to our ranch. We helped who we could, but there were so many. 
Eventually, my father started turning people away before we ran out of food. Things got violent. My father and I got our guns, and we drove them off. About two dozen men came back in the night after we'd gone to sleep. They set fire to the ranch house and barred the doors from the outside. My whole family was trapped inside. I smelt the smoke. And I got myself and my little sister, Rafaela, out through a window. But everyone else. My parents, my grandmother, my two brothers, and two of my sisters all died. Rafaela and I ran. We were pursued by some of the men who attacked our home. But I was always a good shot. The ones who came after us, I killed. The rest, I left be. I had to take care of Rafaela. Not throw my life away on revenge. Maybe. I don't know. All I know is that for all my skills with a pistol, I couldn't help them. Anyway, that was weighing on my mind. Thanks for letting me get it out in the open. Hey, you're not one of the troopers. Got a second? I have work I need done, and nobody here at the camp has the time or inclination to help me out. I handle communications for Camp Forlorn Hope, compiling reports I've received from the rangers at Camp Golf as well as the brass at McCarran. Unofficially, I'm also in charge of radio security. No one else seems to take it as seriously as I do. I have the delightful task of tabulating stockpiles, kill ratios, mission success rates, radiation deaths, and other truly fascinating numbers. I've come across numerous inconsistencies between our numbers and our reports, especially with regards to intercepting hostiles. I'm wondering if our radio security codes have been compromised. I need someone to deliver security code upgrades to each of the ranger stations. Less than a third of reported enemy sightings are getting intercepted. Either our intel is faulty, or our enemies are one step ahead of us. I've been trying to get someone to authorize this update, or at the least get field clearance to leave the camp and do this myself. But nobody takes me seriously. They just think I'm an incompetent desk jockey trying to glamorize the importance of my job. The security codes are unique to the radios at each ranger station. They're useless anywhere else. This holotape contains the updated security codes for the ranger stations. Show it to the comm officers there. Once the new codes are in use, anyone still using the old codes will just hear static if they're listening in on our frequencies. Bye. Got to President Kimball? How long can we hold out?
What a pointless trip. Here I thought I'd get a shot at that junkie bastard. You killed him? Well, shit. Here I dreamed up this whole elaborate revenge fantasy. Didn't really think I'd do it, but as long as the tubby bastard was actually alive, I could pretend like I would. Here, I owe you. Take it and get out of here, before I indulge my inner bitch and spoil the moment. I've been seeing Usanagi, and things are better. I'm not so angry all the time, you know? And, uh, I'm not trying to jump every woman in camp. Well, not all the time, anyway. Thanks for your help with Usanagi and all, but I still like him tall, blonde, and female. Yeah, try not to get killed. Didn't think you'd be back. What's this about? You a merc? Well, then I guess you want to talk to my uh, father, Major Daughtry. He's our CO. Yeah, look, he's not my real father. He just looked after me for a while. It's a long story, and I'd get tired of talking before it was through. All right, goodbye. Hey. Patrolling the Mojave almost makes you... Shit. I didn't even get a shot at that Nephi b bastard before he went down. Yeah, I'll s s see you around. We got ourselves a little ranger family reunion now. Time's right for a feud.
Why are you still here? Very well. You can tell Reyes that this station is secure. Sir. Patrolling the Mojave almost makes you wish for a nuclear winner. We got ourselves a little Ranger family reunion now. Time's right for a feud. <laughs>